talk about, which is really um, how we managed uh, the provision of walking access, which is very often allowed in licences. Um, to give a little bit of background, the University of Bath Library is actually a 24 hour, seven days a week library. Um, it's only staffed by security for an awful lot of its opening hours, so that sort of influenced um, what we did. Um, the problem we dealt with really was the fact that librarians are, as Martin was quite uh, fairly saying earlier, no longer free to decide what we do with stock. We don't buy it and then choose what we do with it. We actually have a lot of different terms and conditions attached to that and uh, I think most university libraries are finding that it's not one set of terms and conditions, it's one set of terms and conditions per resource and there are a lot of resources. Um, and obviously the licences try to strike a balance between access to the resource, because otherwise you wouldn't buy it at all, um, but also the sort of viability of the publisher, which is exactly what Trevor's been talking about. And most user groups are covered by the licences, certainly student users, staff users, but uh, community users who have no form of affiliation to the university are a bit of a challenge. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of universities like us are looking at the widening participation issue and we want to be part of our, our local community as much as we want to uh, you know, serve, serve our um, traditional users. And licences do often accommodate that, um, but making access available through existing systems can be a bit of a, a trouble. And, um, you know, as, certainly, you know, when we thought about Raptor, it was a question of whether IT could actually support that. So anything we could do that was within what we were already using um, was, was a bonus. Um, the licences themselves have a range of restrictions, um, and that might be on to the library building itself, or that we need to register users, or that we need to supervise users. And obviously being 24-7, supervision of users wasn't an option. Um, and the kinds of uses we get didn't um, promote user res registration. Um, and as the library is gradually moving to a more online only, particularly our journal content, um, we, we wanted to be able to provide the same kinds of access we were able to provide when we had the, the same content, but in a, in a book. Um, and uh, Sconnell access users and school users were quite beginning to become quite demanding of our resources because what we had left on the shelves in print was not really enough to meet the, the broad needs. The collection was actually quite split and it was moving increasingly online. Um, certainly for us, the school groups that we, we work with who are working on the extended project and the International Baccalaureate qualification, they very often are students of the future and we want to make sure they get a good experience, but their topics that they can be working on could be literally anything. And um, very often we have the resources to meet those needs, so what we wanted to do was make those accessible. Um, and what we needed to do was identify what we could access, because some licences permitted it, some didn't. Um, and make them available within our existing systems and make sure we met the terms of the licences. Um, we worked on identifying licence terms using um, a wiki data bank, which um, was something that, um, that I developed as a, a response to the amount of information that we would gathered in relation to the e resources. Um, the, you know, a lot of places have gone with electronic resource management systems, um, but for us, we actually didn't have any kind of collection of that information. It was all in, in box files and on someone's uh, shelves or in their emails um, or in their head. Um, and what we really wanted to do was get that information out. Um, we looked, we decided to use our wiki intranet just because it was there and it was already used and everybody could access it. Um, but it had also had the benefit that it was extremely flexible. We didn't have to fit to a rigid form. There weren't any limits on what we could include, so we could include as much or as little as we needed about a particular resource. Um, we included in there licenses, usage statistics, title lists, and how we actually access those resources, which in most cases is IP authentication. Um, and used a sort of tagging system with labels to get a summary table of, of what we had. This was done for our e-resources management purposes, but it actually had the knock-on effect that once we had all that information in one place, we were able to use it. So, for example, we were able to provide a, a summary list to our interlibrary loans department who can then um, decide whether they can supply copies of resources to other libraries. 
Um, and this is sort of an example of how we've done it. So it's just a very basic um, web page. I mean, it's all we've done is with a, a pro forma, we've extracted the pieces of information we wanted to know about. Um, and then we've, we've summarised them there. Um, as I say, it wasn't designed for walk-in access, but what it did mean was that when the walk-in access issue became very um, sort of high in, in our minds, we actually very quickly could see how many providers were likely to allow walk-in access, and we could very quickly see whether it was worth going down a more technical um, route to provide that access, and whether it was going to provide enough access to make it worth, worth our time. Um, and we could. We also knew that if we got them in that list, we had the licence there and we could go in and then make a more detailed list of, of what was permitted and by whom. And as I say, the, the actual detail of those licences was quite different um, for different providers. For some of them, it was just, you know, they had to be present in, on, on campus. Uh, for others in the library building, we had to exclude any that involved use of registration um, or supervision or any other kind of limits. So I, I know one would only let us provide it to SCOML visitors. We don't collect that information, so there was no way we could comply with those terms, so, so we just excluded them from our list of allowed licences. <coughs> one thing that really made things a lot easier was very standard licences, like the EduServe Chest licences, like the GIST Collections licences, because we were able to analyse them so much more quickly. We knew where to look in licences, or it was very clearly laid out in a checkbox format. Um, and, you know, using the wiki to, to sort of do that was actually very, very successful, um, and it's improved a lot of our information control. We're actually a lot, in a lot more control of our licences now, um, just because we can see what we're supposed to be doing, and, and nobody's having to guess whether something <coughs> is or is not permitted. Um, and I think, you know, although it, it's not the best system in terms of in 